Dwight Johnson. Uh, Dwight has spoken at On Point uh, before. He is a speaker. He is a youth pastor at Preston Taylor Ministries in downtown Nashville. Uh, he is a musician. He's just an all-around awesome guy, and uh, I'm just so happy to have this conversation about worship with him. And um, yeah, here it goes. Thanks so much. Bye. All right, we are here with Dwight Johnson. Uh, <laughs> Dwight, uh, thank you for being here. You are a uh, a good friend, and you've been with our men's group before. But um, for those of the guys who haven't um, had the pleasure of meeting you or hearing you speak, could you give, tell us just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, man. Hey, good morning. Thank you so much, Arsh, for letting me hop in on this, man. This is so much fun. Uh, yeah, my name is Dwight, Dwight Johnson, and uh, I am originally from Mississippi. Uh, I've been in Nashville, though. It's home. I've been here almost eight years. Um, and so I moved here. Uh, in 2012 to pursue uh, a degree through the Center for Youth Ministry Training in Memphis Theological Seminary and interned uh, at Preston Taylor Ministries here in town in West Nashville. And after graduation in 2015, uh, yeah, I got an opportunity to stay on and um, hang out and, and it's been a fun eight years. But yeah, from Mississippi and um, just deeply, deeply family oriented, um, and I, and I love the Lord. Like those, those two things kind of drive everything that I do, which I'm sure we'll be talking about here in, in a second. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I think most of the people in our church who know you know you as a youth pastor or a speaker or, you know, Preston Taylor. What I think that a lot of them might not know about you is that you're also a musician mm. um, and a worship leader. And um, so I wonder if you could tell us just a little bit about that. Like, how did you first get into music? Oh, man, let me go back into the into the archives. <laughs> I and, I, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, people can, can pinpoint that exact moment when they when they first, first sung their first song and all that fun stuff. And man, I, I, I don't remember a life where I wasn't singing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't I don't necessarily remember a time where I wasn't. Um, yeah, doing something musically. Uh, so just so as long as I can remember, I've been singing and I, I grew up in a family that with a grandmother that's a singer and her sisters and brother were singers um, and and just grew up around that, grew up in church. And so because of that, I, I was just surrounded by it. Yeah. And so as soon as I was able to sing in, in children's choir, man, I, I was in that thing. And uh, yeah. And then I got connected with piano when I was about 10 or 11. I wish I would have stuck with it a little bit more consistently. I think I'd be a little bit better, but I'm okay. Um, <laughs> and, um, and yeah, man, so yeah, just, I, you know, it's one of those things that I really believe God just gave me. Um, and, it, you know, outside of the formal, like, I, I, I took, I was a vocal concentrator in college. So my undergrad degree is in music. Um, but even before then, I had, I had already been singing all my life. So it's just something that has just always been inside of me and something that I've always enjoy doing and and have just taken it as opportunities to help others man and to also help me and to strengthen my own personal faith and, and to encourage me in times when um things aren't as easy so well that's a that's a great leading off point because how has music helped you grow in your faith how what role has it played in your faith development do you think yeah, man. You know, I think uh, there's there's some quote somewhere that says when words fail, music speaks or something like that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I botched it. But, um, <laughs> you know, you grow up in church, man, and especially as like a teenager, you're getting all these sermons from from your pastors. You're getting, you know, these talks from, you know, people that work in your youth group. You're getting these talks from your parents and all these other caring adults that love you and want the best for you. But as a teenager, I um, mean, as a young person, this, it was it was it was sometimes hard to just like take those things for face value and just be like, okay, because all right, cool, I I, I understand that. I left a lot of times from those conversations really confused mm -hmm. and and really like just I don't know which way kind of to go. Like, I, I felt like I got some good suggestions and I got some good information. But at the same time, it was like, I don't I don't know that I'm, I'm fully computing what the, what's being said. Yeah. And so, man, music really became an outlet for me. Um, hmm. it, it became a place where I could 
lose myself in my thoughts and and to and to also recollect my thoughts. I think yeah. that part was important more so than just losing myself. I was also able to find you know some sort of of common ground in a song or in a melody or in a harmony or a chord, things that people would sing or say in, in a song or a chord they, that they would hit or something like that that just was like, man, that's exactly where I'm at right now. And that makes sense to me. And so it just became a place where I was able to take the huge concepts of, of words and advice and my life situations. Mm -hmm. And I was able to collaborate that to this creative space that wasn't limited to the boundaries that I had over here. Yeah. And it became a place where I could just unfold and really express myself. And it just became, yeah, it was just a healthy place for me. I think, I think back to um, when I was probably, I think I was 22 or 23. And uh, there was this, this Christian album that had come out and it was so different from anything I'd ever heard. It was um, just, it just really spoke to me in this way. And I remember one day I got home from work I was living, it was my first time living in an apartment by myself. Um, I got home from work and I just put that album on and I just laid on the couch and let it just kind of like wash mm -hmm. over me. And I feel like that was one of the more, it's such a weird thing, but it felt like one of the more formational things for me where like my faith went to another level just in an evening of listening to this album laying on the couch by myself. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt like God spoke to me in more ways there than and like sometimes sometimes I think more than like six years of youth group and helping with youth group and all that absolutely. stuff absolutely it's just absolutely. crazy how much I feel like God can speak to us through music and it, and, and and it's so funny that you say that man because you know for me it, it was it was the gospel. like I grew up listening to gospel um but I also like hip-hop um I'm also like a like I grew up with my the older generation so like I was in a household where my grandparents were there and my great granddad was there on oh, both yeah. sides of my family at some point. And so I grew up around, you know, all of the, all the wisdom, but also the taste of music, man. So, you know, it was gospel. It was, you know, it was good R and B. It was good, you know, like Gladys Knight and the Pips and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people like Anita Baker, just, you know, so just like, but all of those songs cultivate a story, right? Like people write from stories, people write from, you know, their own experiences. And I think one of the best ways that we grow, man, and I think the reason why music is so strong is because those stories are speaking into our own stories, right? Yep. And, yep. And, and, and if even for the moment to just be able to collaborate or be around someone that gets it, it may not be, it may not solve the problem there in the moment, but it's just like, you know what, I'm connecting with this and this is at rest and I'm at peace with this and I'm gonna just sit here with it. So I, yeah, I, I've had plenty of those lay on the couch and let a record play or, um, or an MP3, uh, MP3, <laughs> <laughs> or now Spotify, you know, right. depending on what generation you're in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've also been a worship leader. Um, I know, uh, I've been a worship leader and I feel like when I was a worship leader, and I wonder if this is the same for you, did it change your relationship with God or the church being a worship leader, being that person up front, leading other people? into worship yeah um i i think so i i think there were some um i felt like there was some responsibilities that i had to the people that i was leading worship to um at least care for my own life in a way mm -hmm. that could resemble what i was doing on stage yeah um i didn't get that lesson right away and so there were struggles right there were these struggles of expectation um these struggles of what people wanted from me out of that um, and man, even just sometimes struggle with like, where, you know, where people just, use, people just using my gift for their own gain for their service, or was it truly for the ushering in of the spirit? Like, you know, I, you know, you struggle with things like that. It, right. it kind of others. But I think at the end of the day, what I've been able to learn as a worship leader is that I'm not up there even for people. Mm. Uh, if worship leading is just about what you're doing for the people out there, you're missing the entire point. Yep. I think worship leading is a posture that allows ourselves to be totally vertical. Um, and then as we're vertical with the Holy spirit, then the people are going to get what they need because the Lord will do what the Lord will meet their need. Yep. It's not, not the song that I sing or the chords that I play that meet the need or even have anything to do with the Lord moving any faster or slower. It's yeah. just 
it is just an example. It is, it is just, uh, you know, th this is what I'm doing. As the Lord's feeling me, I know that he's going to use whatever I'm doing to fill up others. And I think once I truly got that, I think once I fully was able to begin wrapping my head around that, I approach worship differently. Okay. It feels so much like a chore or like a, you know, godly, you know, I got to be absolutely perfect. It, it really releases the pressure. For me, it, it, it released the pressure. Performance and it was just like, man, this is just like in my quiet time. This is just like in my, in my I'm sorry. Time. Sorry about this, kids. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Sing, sing, baby, sing. Uh, <laughs> um, sing there, but yeah, so that that was my that's that's what worship leading did for my relationship with the Lord. I guess one of the things that I struggled with when I was a worship leader, and I wonder if you do too, is like you. I don't know. Like you put. I feel like there were there were times when now we put so much effort into it. Um. And it would just fall flat. Like, and yeah. I realized a lot of that was on me. Yeah. Um, but have you ever, like, how have you dealt with that as, as a worship leader before? Cool. That's good. No, that, I, I, I just, I thought of a couple of instances, right, when you said that, where I was like, I, yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I think the other piece to worship leading is whether or not it's just you and the guitar, you and the piano, or if it's you leading a band and singers, you know, mm -hmm. if you're having the responsibility of teaching parts and, um, yeah. and, and you know, teaching chords and things like that, because I, yeah, I, I think that there have been times that I've been in a service where I even felt like I was prepared. I felt like I had what I needed. I felt like I, you know, did what I needed to do and got to the end of it and was just like, eh, oh, okay. That, mm -hmm. that, wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't good. But I, and and I think this speaks a little bit to kind of what I was saying earlier, but I think when you are looking at worship leading as what you're offering back to the Lord versus what you're offering to people, yep. um, it helps you manage those expectations. And even when, the, like, I've had songs completely fall apart during the live worship moment, like just mm -hmm. completely and utterly fall apart. You know, whether we were playing with the track and we got off the track, or, you know, I'm, I, you know, I, one time, man, I started a song in the wrong key and didn't realize <laughs> I've been there until I got into the middle of it when it was time to sing a higher part. And I was like, oh, this, this is not the key that we're supposed to be singing the song. Yep. In. Uh, <laughs> and so, but I think you get to a place, man, when it, when it becomes more about relationship versus uh, performance, yeah. uh, you, you know, you, you jot notes in your brain and you're like, okay, let me not make that mistake again. This isn't what I'm saying, like, Let's just not be, let's not perfect the gift because I don't think that's what I'm saying. But I am saying when those moments happen to me, I'm able to release myself a little bit quicker than I used to. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think worship, music, I, I feel like music in general is something, I'll, you know, this is for our men's group. I feel like music and worship are sometimes really hard for men to connect with. Mm -hmm. um in the yeah. church um you have a guy who who is struggling to connect with worship what would you say to encourage him mm. what would i say Man, that's a good question yeah i think i think a part of that conversation is demystifying what worship is mm. um when when worship becomes about your about your strengthening your relationship with the lord and that and that is the foundation of it then i think there's something that you can begin to really think about and cultivate in those who struggle with it and mm -hmm. i think and i think from just the traditional standpoint of church i think church has I think church hasn't always done the best job of cultivating what true worship is. Yeah. And I think from that level, it has set these unreal, unrealistic and probably in some instances, false expectations of what we are to be doing in worship. Mm. Um, and I, yeah, man. And, and I keep going back to just the personal relationship with Jesus and just like any relationship with anyone else that you're trying to cultivate, um, it takes time and energy. 
And you can't just show up to that relationship expecting there to be a spark if it's not something that you've worked for. Um, it, it has to be something that's cultivated through trial. It does have to be something that's cultivated through expression. Like you have to, you know, you, you have to release yourself. And then so I, for any guy that might be struggling with that, one, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So yeah. we're not, don't, don't beat yourself up about it. Like many, many men, including myself, even with the ability to, to sing and the ability to play, you know, instruments, it, it doesn't, that doesn't automatically mean I feel like singing or playing. Right. Uh, there was a season, man, not too long ago where I didn't sing a song or play a single note. Uh, and so it, it's, it's not just for those who don't feel like they are artistically expressive. Mm. Um, this, this just applies to people that, that just go through things on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I would just say, you know, release, release yourself from, from that pressure but then also, I think I think just spending some time with the Lord and really like making your prayer time, you know, maybe maybe you know switch up your prayer time, switch up your scripture reading time, and maybe just hum a song, or maybe mm -hmm. just you know I think practicing lifting your hands or whatever that expression is. I think it comes to practice, and then it begins to manifest itself as an automatic response. When you're in that situation where you're worshiping the Lord. Right. I love that. I think, I think that's such great advice. I think it's so hard to teach people what worship really means because mm. they have it so ingrained in them from the way they've grown up in the church. And if it's different than that, then they feel like they're doing something wrong. Yeah. And I think, I think what I try to tell people is there is no right way to do it, you know? If you need to just sit there and let the music wash over you, that's, I feel like that's worship. You know, if you need to shout at the top of your lungs, that's worship. If you need to just be, just be like, absolutely. Um, well, I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, I wondered if you might have a, a song that you might want to play before we go. Yeah, man. Um, strangely, oddly enough, you caught me by a piano. Uh, so that's fun. Yeah, I'm. A, I'll do. I'll. I'll do a little bit of an original. Um, okay. And I'm gonna try to remember these words without looking at them. And if I mess <laughs> up, I'll just pretend like I didn't. Um, but like we were talking about earlier, man. You know, writing songs and playing songs for me have has just become an expression of how I'm feeling in that particular season yep. in that particular moment. And so this song, uh, this song is called Wounds, and it's in. It's kind of inspired by just personal like afflictions that I've experienced in my life and just personal pain, but also connected to a sermon I heard uh, one of my pastors preach at my church mm. uh, a few years ago about the topic of wounds and what wounds do to produce um, patience, you know, trial work with patience and, you know, just really on the line of how God uses our pain and uses the things that we endure to cultivate us and to strengthen us. And so, um, yeah, so that's what this song is about and yeah, I'll do I'll do a little bit of it. Awesome.
and show the world what tried to hurt you was only healing for your soul. How can you grow when they never leave, keeping you weak? Oh, they stay to remind you that you are strong and that you're never alone. So let your wounds be the place where your testimony begins, the place where the darkness gives way to the light within. And let your wounds be the seed from which your freedom can grow and show the world will try to hurt you. It's only healing for your soul. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for being with us today, man. That was awesome. Yeah, man. I appreciate the opportunity. I, I needed this more than I think I, I thought, <laughs> man. That's I, awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, man.